Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. It's time to learn how video editors can collaborate in real time using Premiere Teams and Lucid Link. All right, I'm joined here live uh, with Dave Helmley. He's the Director of Strategic Development for Video at Adobe. Hello, Dave. How's that hey, going there? Colin. Good to see you again, bud. Yeah, Dave used to be my manager at Adobe, and when I was on the video team with him, we're still good friends. I uh, truck on down there when I need some good uh, U.S. Southern barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked Dave, who's almost 500 miles away from me. He's in Annapolis, Maryland. I'm outside of Toronto, and I needed to have someone edit a project that I'm going to be editing at the same time. Dave does this a lot more than me because he works with a lot of video editors that are collaborating all the time. And this could be one or two editors or a whole bunch of people in a building. So we're gonna, we need two things. So first of all, we need just a Creative Cloud account, Dave, right? Yeah, it's been same, same account that you've always used. Yep. Right, so there's not a Teams Premiere Pro different from that. It's just a regular Premiere Pro in Creative Cloud. Correct. And then we need a way to share all of the media. And this is one thing that a lot of newbies forget is, oh, we can share the project on something. And, and I never recommend people use things like Dropbox, Google Drive, and stuff like that. LucidLink works, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but LucidLink works and acts like a local hard drive and Premiere Pro likes that. But you have to be able to access the media. and. Both of us are connected through LucidLink. I'll show you how I set that up in a second. And Dave is connected to that. So the first thing you have to do if you're if you're not if you want to work with another editor that has Premiere Pro is they need to install LucidLink. And you're using your account, your LucidLink account, and you're just sharing that access with someone else. Here is the LucidLink control panel. I've got users, and you can see I've set up Dave H right here, and I've set up shares to my share Surreal Escape. And if I close that, this is in my desktop. So you can see it looks like a regular drive down here. And if I go into this, you can see there's the project, and there's all the audio, and there's all the video. And Dave, you could probably show that on your end too. Yeah, Colin, as you can see here, I've got your Lucid Link space that you've named Work, and I can double click on this. On my Mac, it comes up like a regular Mac drive, where I think on yours, it may be mapped to drive L. So as you can see here, I see everything the same as I would be on any standard you know, USB or network drive, uh, things like that. So it's very easy to understand what's on the drive, deleting it. Like I, I have no worries about using any utility. This is just native to, to me. Yeah, and, and that's the cool thing is you're on a Mac, I'm on Windows, and they don't have the same naming structure of, of paths. Uh, so, right. but, but LucidLink takes care of all of that, so I don't have to worry. Yeah, and I, I think the other thing for the users to mention, just, you know, it, just things like Premiere, Photoshop, most desktop applications on Mac or Windows, they don't really understand when something's cloud. So yeah. everything presents itself as being local and you'll start to, to work with it like you would any other local drive. You kind of forget it's on the cloud. Right, okay, so I have Premiere Pro open with a local project. And to collaborate, I'm not gonna share this project. I'm going to convert this to a Teams project. In the edit menu, Team Project, Convert Project to Team Project. And when I click on that, it's going to allow me to um, add more people. But Dave, I want to say that that calling this uh, convert is not really true. To me, you know what it is? It's copy. Maybe I'm a yeah, little bit anal. True. No, it, yeah, I think you're looking at that right. It's copying, um, basically making a cloud file, project file that will track changes which you'll get into shortly, but you're right. It is it, it is a copy. It's a copy because it doesn't change my local project. My, my local project just, it sits there. This copies it and it puts it somewhere in the cloud. It's not here anymore, right? Correct. But 
for safety's sake, it is backing up local just in case something blew up that I will have at least the last edit locally on my drive. Right. Okay. So if we didn't have to s explain this, you simply share the file uh, on Lucid, sh share the media on Lucid Link, and then convert your, your project. So now I'm going to get Dave involved in this. So I need to go back in here and down at the bottom, you can see I'm a collaborator and I'm going to add Dave here and he's in my list already and I'll invite him and you can see it says invite pending. Okay, I had to finish converting it to a team project before the, the invite went out. Dave, here, here's another confusing thing that happens, is yeah. when I converted this to a team project, it actually kept the local project open. That's correct. So that's a little confusing, because if I click between these two, uh, th this is the start one, which is local, and that's the collaborative one, and it hasn't been published. So I'm going to close this project. And I'm going to go back to the collaborative one and publish that. And these are all the things that I'm publishing. All right. So I converted this, I published it, and I invited Dave. I should be. Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point, Colin, go open team project. I'm going to go to invites. I see my projects here. I'm going to click on the one and I'm going to say accept. And now um, it's going to um, open up that project. Okay. Oh, and there you are. Pro. And then do you want me to go ahead and open up the sequence? Yes. And now I see your sequence, and I am just going to put this in an editing mode for me. There we go. Looks great. You've been busy. Yes, I have. So the, ver the very weird place, I'm going to go to 1420. All right. to click on publish and I'm just going to put uh, insert edit and I see it your uh, teams is telling me that you are editing this and I'm in a view only mode so this is important this way I can't step all over what Dave's doing he's editing this and now I have an update button here and it says update is available. So I'm going to update and watch the timeline. It's now changed. There's this whole new section that came in just before the chicken. This whole section is what Dave just edited. And if I make any change to this, like select all of this, I want this down in V1. I'm going to alter option, drop this down. Publish comes up. So the only thing I'm doing here is just consolidating all of these clips to one track. And if I click publish, it's going to publish. And it really makes sense to uh, put a little note, consolidate, consolidated clips on V1. Of course, it can be much more uh, complex than that. And Dave should now see an update in yeah, his Yeah, and side. by the way, note, notes are super important, right, Colin? Because we may go back and yeah. walk back in history. And, uh, you know, as you and I often know, I, you may have been out of the office and I'm editing. And you're like, what did he do uh, to, the, to the project? And you go back and read the notes. And you can walk back in time. Yeah. Um, and you, you've, hit pub, you've hit publish? Yes. Okay, so here, Colin, I see the update button. I'm just going to hit update. And uh, I see your change. Excellent. And then you should also have an update on your side.
you should also see a checkbox on your side that the project's up to date. So I do. I'm not. Yes. So yeah. we kind of know we're both in sync. We're both up to date. Now, back in the edit menu, team project, uh, there is media management, browse versions, and browse auto saves, which are happening local. If I go to, to uh, browse versions, this opens up a media a browser, and you can see the changes here um, as I start moving through. This is before I put anything in, and that's after. So just like Dave was saying before, there's no worries about somebody completely messing up a project. Every single version of every single change is available. I see a tail wagging there. <laughs> you got, Dave, you have a tail now? <laughs> come on, Bob. Come on, come on. I'll do you I'll do right there. Uh, live demos. I, I didn't know how notice, noticing that, how noticeable yeah. that was going to be. All right. So you've got great control. Um, we can go back in time. Now, the other one I just saw there that I want to have a look at in team projects is media management. Uh, and this is where it shows uh, if media is offline, where's the footage, where is it stored, and things like that. So media management's the top, it's the top one. Local media mapping, you should see Surreal Escape. Oh, I know where it is. It's in volumes. Yeah. Work. Oh yeah, that's right. Yours for yours is a little a little different. I I've got it on mine, Colin. Just so you know, so you can grab it here. So if you want yeah. to show it on Mac, I've got it. So there's all the the uh, media showing up in here. So it, it's remembering what this media is. Uh, it's all connected and working just fine. So another great feature, Colin, is I'm going to go ahead and jump over to LucidLink because I have some graphics that I need to get added to this project that I was working on earlier. So I'm just going to go into LucidLink. I'm going to create um, a graphics folder that, by the way, you have no idea that I'm doing. And that's the whole point. Right. And I'm going to drag this file onto LucidLink. And now that I know it's on LucidLink, and actually I'm going to delete it from my desktop because I just don't want to worry about it anymore. Like I know that this is uh, sort of, um, uh, you know, the 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 um, folder of truth. Now I'm just going to use it just like I would normally use it in any other edit. I've added it to uh, to Premiere Pro. Let me just go in here, and I'm going to just resize this graphic here. And then I'm just going to sort of put this down and stretch this like someone might. Uh, and maybe maybe this is, um, you know, the way a lot, a lot of people are working, just stretch that out. And now here I'm just going to say publish update. And I just want to say added um, VR uh, logo. And now you should get an indication that um, there's a change. All right, I see update, so I'll click on that. And oh, there it is. You added the uh, logo in. I mean, so just think about that for a second, because that is what we're we're chasing, right? For so long. Yeah. You know, if you just have a discipline that just says, just like you're at, you're using a server at work, all files. Do not get added to a project unless they come from a single source. That's the yep. first thing. But the thing about team projects is as you hit update, it's all about the project. You don't really, you're not that concerned with the media. That's sort of what I'm working on. You just know that that element gets added. So the thing is, when you work this way, you can just rest assured, you know, you shouldn't ever get me media offline, right? Or media right. not found and having to, to, to relink that. that. That is really the magic here. Yeah, and I've actually worked with another uh, editor uh, where I was creating stuff for him, and then he was offloading a bunch of stuff to a, another editor. Both of them had yeah. never heard of, of Lucid Link. They'd never heard of it. It only took them, you know, a few minutes to finally get it. Oh, that's it? And, and the freedom that you have to think that it's like a folder right in front of me and right in front of you, and it instantly shows up. 
Once you get that, that that is so addictive. Well, and there's also, I mean, you know, Dropbox, great product, but it's like this is just a different way to work. I don't yeah. have to worry about sync and share and did I do this or did I right. push it forward and all that sort of stuff. You know, the you know, the Google Drives and the OneDrives are great for what those do, but for editing like this, it just needs to work the way any attached drive needs to work. Exactly. And we all know that when you're exporting out something, it takes some time. And what's important that people don't seem to understand if you're using some of these other solutions is that file that you're writing, that export is susceptible to something weird happening in a Google Drive or Dropbox. You don't want it to touch it. Your operating system is smart enough to know that if an application like Premiere Pro is writing a file, it's waiting for an end of file operation. And that EOF, tells the operating system, we now have written a successful file. Don't mess with this before you get that. And, and that's what Lucid Link does. It says, that's cool, you're exporting a file, I'm not gonna mess around with it. Exactly. And the other thing that, that is happening behind the scenes, which is so difficult to, to describe to people, Lucid Link stores two things, raw data, and then it stores metadata, which describes the raw data into files like video clips, audio clips, logos, and things like that. So when you move the playhead, it's only streaming the blocks needed, which is minimal information. It's absolutely brilliant. It's the only solution that does that. Yeah, and the, the other thing that I think is uh, that's important is you can look on your LucidLink drive uh, and while you were talking there, I just went and created an exports folder. And you can see that it is in the process of exporting that directly as if it's a local drive. So I don't even bother to export locally, right, and put it on my drive. I just export to LucidLink because I don't, then I don't have to remember to upload it later. And this this project will take a little while to render because it's, uh, it's a little longer and there's a lot going on with it. But I just wanted to say, feel free to use it as a destination drive on your exports. And yeah, you make a really good point. Why do you want to export this out local, then copy and, and sync and share like all the other solutions? Yeah. It's like you throw your hands up and you, hey, don't use my drive, use this and off it goes. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Good point, Dave. All right, I think we have uh, covered all the things I wanted to cover. Working with teams is obviously as, as once you convert that to a team project, uh, it's protected. I'm not gonna wreck your edit. You're not gonna wreck my edit. We can always go back in time. LucidLink adds security to this. So no one can touch this project or the media unless they have access that I've given them. It's a great way to look at it. It is magic. All right. Hey, Dave, thanks so much for helping me on this. I really appreciate it. I know you're so busy and uh, I was dealing with a with a plumbers coming over here. Believe it or not, I had a sewer pipe uh, problem and they were just, they were just editing, uh, editing. They were just busting up concrete like half an hour before I got on with Dave. So, oh, we, so we, we, we got it all together. All right. Thanks a lot, Dave. I really appreciate it. All right, bud. Have a great week. All right. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop where you can donate once monthly, any amount. There's a bunch of free stuff that you can download. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to go and bug Dave when I need to edit and get us together to show you the power of real-time collaboration using Premiere Teams and Lucid Link.